Guten Gardening, everybody. Well, it's finally time to open up our community garden space. This is our third year growing here in our community garden, and we hope this is going to be the most productive year yet. For those of you who haven't seen any of our previous community garden videos, what you should know is we're growing in a really nice size space here and we only pay $75 for the entire growing season to add over a thousand square feet to our garden potential. The first season we got in with a quarter of a plot and we still grew a decent amount of vegetables even though we started really late in the season. Last year we got two full plots and we grew a whole bunch of corn and over 200 pounds of winter squash and some sweet potatoes as well. But this season, we're gonna change a couple of things up and I'm gonna tell you in this video why we're not gonna be growing potatoes at the community garden this year. Now that being said, I have to finish everything up here. I've got a lot of work to do this morning. I gotta finish putting in fencing. I've gotta go ahead and weed this place because the weeds really take over here. And I'm gonna be using my favorite tool that they have here. In fact, I'm gonna put a link to this tool if you've never seen this kind of hoe before. This is one of my favorite tools because of how it deals with the weeds. I'll show you that in just a second. But I'm gonna get to work here laying everything out and show you what we've got planned for this growing season. You see what I'm talking about when I say that the weeds take over everything, but let me show you just how nice this tool is because what it does is it comes through and pops the tops off here so I can come back through with a rake and not have to worry about taking up so much of the dirt that you have to deal with when you use just a regular, a regular hoe because that really gathers the dirt together. So this makes it so much easier to collect, not just the dirt, but to, to weed and then come back through, look how quick this is, and gather up the weeds that are on top. Much, much easier. You know, everybody who's out here gardening has a different layout, different set of interests in terms of the vegetables that they're growing. The folks behind me have some really nice, high quality weed mat that they've laid down to keep their weeds down. We actually had a little bit of weed mat that somebody gave us, just one long strip of it that I put in one part of the garden. And we're gonna see what that does in terms of keeping the weeds down because it's not exactly the highest quality weed mat, but that's gonna be one of the different things that we do to try to keep weeds down this year. But what I really wanna focus on right now is right here, and you probably can't even see it that well, but that's just some two foot fencing that we found here. One of the nice things about a community garden space is oftentimes the folks that either don't come back or have extra, they'll leave it so that it can be free for anyone. And so in our third year here, we've always gotten the fencing for free. And yes, that means that in all likelihood, we're gonna have some mismatch. Here's some plastic fencing to go with our metal fencing, but it's free, it does the job. And so we'll take it. I, I don't have any problem with using the supplies that we're given here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting up the rest of the fence here. I'm gonna get that hoeing done so that we can get this whole area ready to be planted. And then we're gonna talk about what we're planting this year. And again, why we're not planting our potatoes here in the garden. I think that's an important decision for us. All right, so far I've got a little bit more than half of the way around with our fencing here. And what I'm gonna to do to ensure that the last bit of fencing, and it's a decent amount, but the last bit that I found here gets us the whole way through the rest of our garden spaces. This is at least twice as tall as I need it. So I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers here, cut this in half, and that'll double the amount that I have. And that should get us the rest of the way around. Hey, good morning. <laughs> no, how are you? You know, one of the things I love about the community garden space, and I think you saw it just now, I'm out here getting some work done, but there are plenty of other gardeners who are coming and going. And so there's always an opportunity. And there are a few in particular who I absolutely love to talk to, uh, love to talk about some of what we're growing, some of the knowledge that we can share with each other in terms of what we've experienced out here. It's pretty cool. All right, back to work. Well, as I'm sure you can tell, I'm wearing something different now than I was at the beginning of this video. And that's because I had so much work to do that I ended up out here a second day so I could get the planting done. But I've just finished up 12 rows for our corn. And corn is one of the things that we've grown here the last couple of years. But there is something that I hadn't taken into consideration when I decided what to plant in terms of variety last year. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
So these are the three varieties that we're choosing to grow this year. And if you look closely, you can see that these are designated as SE, SH2, which are synergistic hybrids, which means they're supposed to be grown near other synergistic hybrids or SE varieties. Now, of course, I know that different types of corn shouldn't be planted necessarily near to each other. And, you know, you don't want to plant your popcorn by your sweet corn and so on. But for whatever reason, last year when we decided to make our selections, I didn't take a look at the different varieties here. One of the things I really like about the Jung's website is they have a description of the different types of corn varieties and which ones should be grown near to each other. And one of the things they talk about is if you plant these synergistic hybrids near to some of the other varieties that aren't meant to be close together, you end up with a tougher kernel, a starchier kernel. And that's actually what we ran into with some of our corn last season. So we're hoping that by planting these varieties that can be planted near to each other, we won't have that problem this year. Now I'm planting on the far western side of our plot. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm trying to get as far away from corn as possible or other varieties of corn. So where I'm planting may not be an ideal distance. We're probably about 25 feet from our neighbor's corn, but they're not growing corn farther west of us and so you know, I'm just trying to give us the best chance as, as we can to be uh, minimizing the cross-pollination here. Now just like last year I've got rows that are about two feet apart and I'm going to be planting these about an inch in depth and about eight inches six or eight inches apart from each other. I've got 450 that I'm going to try to plant here so we'll see how that goes. So here's what I ended up doing. I put the Serendipity Triple Sweet in my far four rows here. My middle four rows are this Honey Select Triple Sweet Hybrid. And my leftmost four rows are Avalon Triple Sweet Hybrids. So 12 rows of corn, ready to go. Well, I ended up saving some of each variety. So I didn't plant all 450, but I did that just in case we have some poor germination. And we can reseed wherever we see the corn not coming up. I'm going to water this whole area nice and deeply. And then I'm going to plant one more thing out here that's going to take up most of the garden space. And it's not potatoes. Well, here they are all started from seed, our not potato crop that we're planting in here. If you watched any of our videos last season from our community garden, you know that we grew over 200 pounds of winter squash. This is a huge space for us where we can plant so many different varieties of our winter squash and get a huge amount of a vegetable that really has staying power, something that we can keep over the entire winter as long as we're careful with it and we can eat in so many different ways. And so this is the perfect spot for our winter squash. So why aren't we planting our potatoes here? You know that I'm a big fan of potatoes. Team potato, you know I'm a big fan of you. But unfortunately, out here, the primary reason why we can't or aren't planting potatoes, because we certainly could, is just the number of pests that destroy potatoes. And so unless we're gonna get out here regularly and spread some kind of insecticide, or even if it's a natural, and we really have to spend a great deal of time trying to maintain just to get a potato crop that for whatever reason, and our house is only a couple of miles from here, but for whatever reason, we don't have a problem with at our Guten Gardening property. So, why not focus our potatoes at our property where we know we're not gonna have to deal with the pests instead of here. And I'll tell you this, we haven't found a lot of pests that have had a problem with our winter squash. So we've had great harvests. Let's take a look at the varieties of winter squash we're gonna be planting. Well, this winter squash we call our sweetest kombucha squash because we got this originally in about 2017 and it was one of the sweetest kombuchas we ever grew. We saved the seeds from that and we've been growing from that plant for the last couple of years. Believe me, the taste of this one is absolutely fantastic. We're definitely gonna grow some butternut squash. This is the Kinesi hybrid butternut squash. And butternut squash is delicious, but this is our favorite. This is the Canada Crookneck squash. It's similar in many ways to the butternut squash, but the neck of this squash contains so much meat. Actually, I'm gonna show you some footage right now of some of the Canada Crooknecks that we've harvested over the last couple of years. This one is gonna be fantastic. And this one is a really cool winter squash. This is called the Autumn's Choice Winter Squash. And we've grown this a few times over the last couple of years. It's really pretty. It's actually a really nice tasting squash as well. So we've got a bunch of different varieties of winter squash and I'm gonna get these planted all throughout the rest of this space. 
If you want to see how I plant the winter squash, I have a video. I'll link that in the description so you can see exactly what that process looks like. So I won't take you through that now because I need to get the rest of these planted before I get out of here. Well, I've planted 18 of these winter squash in addition to the corn. I got to get them watered up, but there's room for probably 10 more plants out here. So clearly I'm going to have to come back out here and plant some more, but that's all I have time for tonight. I'm just so excited for the potential. Once we open up this community garden space like this, this extra potential, I'm going to encourage you once again, I do this now I've done it every year for the last three years that since we've discovered the ease of growing in one of these spaces and just how much it can add for such low cost. If you look into your community and see if there are any allotments or community gardens that you can potentially plant in, I'm telling you the potential increase in what you can yield is exponential. I can't wait to see this corn. Last year's corn was beautiful. I think this year's corn could be even tastier. Well, if you enjoyed today's video and are excited for the upcoming growing season, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.